Hello, it's me again. Uh, it's Wednesday morning and it's the 29th of April and it's now 11 a.m. It's good to be with you again, it is. And that's just in case you thought it was a Sunday morning, of course. I can reassure you all that it's Wednesday, Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock. Hi Eileen, how are you? Hope you're well. That painting looks grand, Doc. Absolutely grand. Well done, you. There's no end to your talent, is there, Eileen? <laughs> and as before, I'd just like to say to you that um, if you would like to chat, if you would like to text, email, um, then I'm right here. Hi, Judith. I'm right here on the end of my mobile or my emails. And I do know, Judith, that I've got one to reply to you today. I see that grand, grand news. Hi, Lynn. How you doing? Bit of a change in the weather, isn't it? Oh, where's all the sunshine gone? Well, <clears throat> it's obviously hiding behind those rain clouds, isn't it? We have a promise, I think, that it's going to be back soon. So let's hope so, eh? Because it was a bit cold yesterday, Doc, and I had to put eating on. So, just for a bit, but I had to put eating on. So, it seems like, uh, as far as lockdown goes, that we're not out of the woods yet. Um, not as far as we've got a little while to go yet, haven't we, before we are absolutely um, being able to meet with our close family. Can't wait, can you? And, I, and I, I just can't wait. So it's his hoping and his praying. Now then, that got me to thinking about how and when I pray. Well, those of you that know me well know that my best time to pray is when I take my dog, my wonderful Ruby, out for a walk. I love that moment where I can give to God all those prayers. People ask me to pray for their family situations, for themselves. I pray for myself too, saying, Lord, you know, what today? What's going to happen today? New, fresh, every day. Looking and listening for what God might have for us. So... Sometimes people will ask me to pray for their situations, their, their, even their friends that are struggling with their health and with other problems. And of course, I am always happy to do that. Always. That's how I sustain my life. It is undergirded, if you like, so that foundation is there, solid, that prayer time is solid. It's something that I strive to do. First thing in the morning, quiet time, walk with the dog, say my prayers. And I think that's a good discipline. At least it works for me that way. But other people, they might choose lunchtime, they might choose evening, they might choose, you know, any other time. Whatever is right for you. But I will encourage you to have that quiet moment so you know about my prayer and you I know that it's something that anyone can do you don't have to use complicated words or flowery language God isn't isn't bothered about the language we use even if we're ranting and shaking our fist at him just like the people did in the Psalms Ugh, why why God can take it, is big enough. So he's not swayed by our words. He's happy that we're bringing all the stuff that troubles us and makes us happy, of course, to him when we give him thanks as well. God just wants us to be honest with him and say how we're feel feeling. So don't be afraid to have that moment with God. I can assure you God is totally approachable. Prayer is something anyone can do. 
You don't have to have a complicated language. So I was thinking to myself, did you, like me, do the minute silence yesterday? 11 o'clock? Good time. 11 o'clock, isn't it? Did you have that moment silence for all those workers who had lost their lives, who had died? And I wonder, in that moment silence, what you thought about, if anything? Because we can say an awful lot in one minute. We can think about an awful lot in one minute. God doesn't want us to be lost for words. He doesn't want us to be worried about what we're going to say, how we're going to say it. He just wants us to come to him. So if you think you are stuck for words, maybe I was thinking this is the reason why Jesus gave us the pointer, the Lord's Prayer. You know, when I was a little girl, and I know you can say that that wasn't so very long ago. <laughs> but when I was a little girl in primary school, we always had an assembly and it wasn't even a Christian school. We always said the Lord's Prayer and we sang great hymns, you know, like Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, one for you, Lynn, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Lynn Faulkner and anybody else who loves that hymn as well, hey Lynn. And of course, let's not forget Morning Has Broken. But one of my, or I've got lots of favourites, but one of my favourites is Lord of All Hopefulness. They give us that when we hear them, when we read the words, when we turn to the Lord's Prayer, when we think about those words, I might want to remind you how that goes, if that's all right. So this is the traditional version. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Forever and ever. That prayer was a regular thing every day when I was in primary school. We didn't think twice about it. We just said it. And after a while, we could remember bits. And after a bit longer, we could say some bits. When people started that prayer off, Our Father, we were able to continue with those words, just like those hymns. How good is that? When I do baptisms, weddings, funerals, along with the team at St Paul's, there is always the Lord's Prayer tucked in there. When we're in church and we have church services, there is always the Lord's Prayer in there. It's tucked into that service. It's like our bread and butter. Give us this day our daily bread. It's like our bread and butter, part of our diet. For Christians, it's a good pattern to have. It's a pattern that helps to sustain us, as I've said. And as I talked about on Sunday, there is that rich tapestry of life that we all go through. It helps us, gives us that solid rock, that foundation. So you might have heard someone called Jesus the bread of life. In fact, 
you may well have heard him talk about himself being the bread of life. And you might be thinking, well, what does that mean then for us? Are we supposed to eat Jesus? Well, that's another story for another day. But in actual fact, I want to encourage you because, yes, we are supposed to eat Jesus. When we look at our Bibles, when we listen to biblical things, when we watch things like songs of praise and we feel encouraged, nearly always you will find the Lord's Prayer in there. When Jesus called himself the bread of life, he wanted us to turn to his word, the Bible, of course, in any which way you can, whether you read it, whether you listen to it, whichever, which way you want to do that. It's a good foundation. So, yes, we are supposed to eat the word we're supposed to read it, think about it, just like we used to with that Lord's Prayer, digest it, and that helps us to live a better life. You remember, be a better version of ourselves. We pray for, in it, we pray for our daily needs to be met, for forgiveness for wrongdoings, I include myself in this, strength to resist temptation and protection from danger. Again, I include myself in all that I, I, I speak to myself as much as I speak to you on these mornings. I wonder if you have a particular line that's dear to you. For me, it's definitely the one about our daily bread. Because I need Jesus on a daily basis. So, as I talked about earlier, there are many different ways, aren't there? Many different breads, many different ways to eat bread. The physical bread I'm talking about now. French sticks, um, wholemeal, CD, one of my particular favourites, alongside running close second is sourdough, that lovely Irish sourdough bread. I adore bread. I love bread. What about bread when it comes out of the oven and you put all that butter on and it all melts? Oh, I can taste it now. I love bread. And there are all different ways to eat it. Say it. For the word of God. Same for the Lord's prayer. Doesn't matter how we feed ourselves on the word. On the bread of life. Because we do need all that physical bread, yes. But we also need the spiritual bread. We need the word of God to sustain us. To see us through the storms, the strife the low times and the lockdowns. So when Jesus talks about being the bread of life, not talked about, you see, because Jesus is living. It's the living word. So when he talks about being the bread of life, I can see how important it is to have him in my life and to pray the prayer that he taught his friends and left for each one of us. It's all still about the invite though, guys and gals. It is Jesus invites us to pray with him. However, we choose to do that. Years ago, I read a great little book by Ruth and I'm talking about a tiny little book like that 
and it was called Personality and Prayer. Please do not sit in a corner of the room with your eyes closed and your head in a shampoo position, if that's not you. Because we need to pray in a way that feels right for each one of us, don't we? As I said right at the beginning, it's not how we do it. It's when, and I would suggest that that be on a daily basis. He loves it, God. He loves it when we talk to him. Maybe you're put off because you think, well, I can't do great things. What will be my purpose if I choose God? Well, Mother Teresa, one of her sayings, and there are many great ones, aren't there? Great, great lady. She says not all people can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. And isn't that what's happening at the moment? Each one of us trying to do small things with great love. Surely we're seeing that at this lockdown time and we can choose to make a difference. Maybe you're thinking, well, I'd like to listen to some prayers. Is there anywhere I could go to maybe help me along my way? Give me some pointers as well as that very special Lord's Prayer. Yes. I can encourage you because last weekend the Church of England actually put out a free number. A free number, guys. So you can type it, tap in this on whichever phone you have got. It's a free number. Please remember, it's free. 0800 8 048044. Now, those of you who are watching might well have, obviously, you do have access to the internet, to Facebook, and all those other great platforms that we can chat on. Maybe you know someone who would really benefit, who has no internet, who has no fancy phone. Maybe you know someone who would really appreciate that number so they can listen to a prayer they can listen to a hymn I love singing don't you I love listening to songs because singing is a great leveler for one thing but they really raise you songs really raise your spirits not just hymns songs really and the ones that we sing along to really raise our spirits so I want to encourage you with that number because in the first day, the, that number had over 6,000 calls. 6,000! 0800 804 8044. 6,000. Maybe we are really returning to those traditional values. Maybe people want more than a new car or a new computer. Maybe people really are wanting, searching to fill their God hole with guess what? God. So maybe today you can think a little bit more about bread. Not just the physical one that you eat on a daily basis, but maybe you can think about Jesus and him calling himself the bread of life. I'm talking about and taking in that bread on a daily basis. And he can be, he, you can choose him to be your fresh new bread every day. I promise. 
have it on good authority. I promise he will sustain you. Just as sure as that crust that you've popped up from the toaster this morning. Think on it. Pray about it. Find out that Lord's Prayer. And if you need any help at all with that, give me an inbox. I'd be delighted to pass that on to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And all those you love and care for but can't see at this moment. The Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace. And we ask for this blessing in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stay at home. Stay safe. Stay well. God bless.